Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures. It's Monday, it's March, and it's time for another weekly painting progress. And we're going to start this week off with a mystery. Uh, myself and my brother cannot remember where this figure came from. I, I know I printed it for him, and considering there are scant few options for cyberpunk looking sci-fi figures i'm gonna guess it's either titan forge's cyber forge patreon or Pepsicles or unit nine and I'm, I'm leaning towards titan forge but i could be wrong cyber forge sorry let me be specific came out decent he's got quite a few um first responders he's painted up as it is so that'll fit in nicely with that crew also managed after many tries trying to get these claws to print and i didn't do a great job but they came out all right and i think once they're painted as i've said many times a decent paint job can turn even the most mediocre print into a nice looking model this is from maker's cult part of their valor core this was actually a pretty modular officer figure that they had there was a variety of parts for him both in terms of bodies weaponry and he wanted a dual power claw wielding Officer, good God, please don't break. Whew. Okay. And to accompany the officer, he went ahead and painted up one of these Anvil Digital Forge Trench Ogres. This is from a recent Patreon release as well. Nice thing is that all this stuff does end up on their webpage as far as I know. Or at least if it's not there, it should have a link to where you can find them. They might not be up because this was pretty recently. So if you're in the mood for big modular trench ogres, like I said, he's big. You might want to keep an eye out for that. I mean, here's a GW ogre for size. I don't have any auger in, now that I think about it. <laughs> That's odd. All right, uh, I feel like I didn't really get a whole lot painted this week, at least in terms of figures. Uh, I crammed to get a ton of the terrain pieces from the Print Your Monsters Fantastic Plants and Rocks campaign done. And I mean, I painted up a lot. This is just the stuff that I did this week. I think I literally did it all like Monday. Alter thing, fly trap. These pumpkins are weird. In person, it looks almost pinkish. Uh, I had to wash it multiple times. This is a German orange from Vallejo, but it it just looks really weird when it first goes on. Some prickly grass back there. Like I'm gonna have to zoom it out for a sec, but then we're gonna have to clear it all out. And then I like these trees. They have that painting contest going on. If you were a backer, or even a late backer probably, you'll have access to those. They're just nice little generic terrain pieces. All right, we'll, we'll get all that back on the screen. Okay, I know I shut him off earlier as well this week. My Test Chaos Warrior. That way when I do the Ravager Warhammer Underworlds, I've got something of an idea. A random plastic... Thetan Warrior, or I think it was a unit attachment from Kulmini's Song of Ice and Fire. It came out okay. Another pair of Footmen. Another pair of Men at Arms. And I don't think I've actually posted the review on that box. I, I probably should do that at some point. Either a men-at-arms or infantryman. I'm going to guess men-at-arms with the full plate like that. Getting geared up to play Dragon Rampant. All right, one of our whiz kids, African-looking figures. And unfortunately, the lighting is not doing his skin justice. It looks really black. That's not the intention. I had no idea what to do with his shield. And unfortunately, his weapons keep bending despite 
my attempts at fixing them multiple times. Try to heat it up again, I guess. First of the Frostgrave Lady Soldiers that I've actually bothered to paint. I built the entire box. I'm thinking I probably need to go back and touch up that spear. It's not as nice as I would like it to be. What else we got? Oh, we painted up some Cawdor guys. Finally, I've had these sitting around for a while. And I just could not figure out what to do with them. So we just started throwing lots of blues and browns and grays. And called a day. I didn't even drill out the gun barrel. For shame. But they're done. So that way I can get the Stig Shambler dude from Martel W. All finished up to show off. And then the most precariously balanced Ouija 13 guys from Arena Rex. Not the best paint job, but he's he's standing upright. He's not falling over and I haven't broken him yet. Oh, I've, I've had some mishaps this week. Another of the Ouija 13. Fur, fur cloak. In fact, they all have fur cloaks, it looks like. And then the last current one I've got, I hate her spear. It just will not straighten out. And it looks like that is the last legs of the current bottle of sealer I'm using because it's starting to splatter. Awesome. All right. You can see it started to splatter on this RNA Studio sculpt. I have no idea what I was doing with her colors. But it kind of looked neat. I hate painting yellow. Figured we'd just give it a try. That's really going to bug me. I, I got to go back and try to fix that. That should be easy enough, though. What do you guys said? These look small. I, I'm trying to figure out what size we are playing in. She looks pretty damn tall. Another R in a studio sculpt. Came out a lot sloppier than I had hoped. I... His, he was supposed to have two swords or a chain or something there, and it failed. So I'm thinking eventually I'm going to stick another blade in his hand there. I think I need to touch up the brass and actually put some gold in there. Again, these are not small models. They're quite closer to Kingdom Death stuff in scale, I think. And let's see. Oh, got another Death Knight from Archvillain Games finished up. We have some really cool looking rat people on Patreon this month. You guys want to check those out. And Bjorn Ironsides. Or at least a very close proximity. Um, this was from one of the last Lovecraft design campaigns. And as promised, I would put up a bunch of the Lovecraft figures that I have painted later this week, hopefully, and I, maybe next week, I'm not sure which, but they do have a new campaign, so I'm going to put a link to that down below. It's a frost-themed, northern, icy, Skyrim-ish, high fantasy Kickstarter campaign. In fact, almost all their stuff is Kickstarter at this point, but they have a lot of neat stuff, both for resin printers with minis and FDM printers if you want to go wild with all the crazy scenery they've got. And finally this week, because I've been meaning to get the video up for these guys, the first of my War Games Atlantic Spiders. And yes, he's got a fancy helmet. I searched high and low for decent hats for these guys. I, I don't know why, but I felt like my spiders need to have hats. And I was already chastised by my son about the fact that those are all now big, calcified, claw-like appendages, but I dismissed his arguments with the their space spiders so your argument is invalid Hi. so uh, a decent sized haul if you count the terrain I'm gonna count it because I had to paint it after all and I will hopefully be able to put a link that isn't like five lines of gibberish I'd asked my mini factory for a new link but I have not seen one yet but overall, 
nice haul of stuff. Uh, it is the only thing keeping my sanity for me as I have to head back into the classroom this week. Whether I want to or not, whether the kids want to or not, but that is neither here nor there. So hopefully <laughs> you might see an awful lot of stuff painted next week as I try to cope with the anxiety of heading back into the classroom as things are absolutely not ready for the kids to be there with us yet. But it is what it is. Hopefully all of you guys are going to stay safe and I am going to do my best to do the same and continue to bring you plenty of obscurities in miniatures. As always, there's links down below if you want to check out any of this stuff firsthand and snag some sweet loot for yourselves. We also have a link to our Patreon, which helps support all of the crazy endeavors that we are continuing to hunt down for you guys and is also a good source of you guys to bug me both for paint schemes and any information that you might wish to have. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.